Hello students, this is Pallav sir and today I welcome you all in my class. So this is the first chapter of class 10 that I'm going to explain that is chapter 2 polynomials. Now before we get on with the exercise, let me just give you a very short introduction on this particular chapter. Fine, this is very easy but equally very very important chapter. Fine, so we'll start with what is a polynomial? Fine. So polynomial is what? So polynomial. Poly means many. Nomial means term. That is many term. Okay. Now any expression. So an expression of the form. The expression of the form p of x now this is how we represent polynomials p of x how it is spelled p of x okay students so an expression of the form p of x a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus dot 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 up till a n x to the power n fine so this particular expression is called a polynomial so what is the observation that we're doing you see there are some terms written in the expression that is a naught a1 a2 and so on so what are this so this is a naught or a0 1 a2 these are all real numbers fine students these are all real numbers and as you can observe that the variable the variable is what what is the variable that we're using here it is x fine so x is the variable here and another observation that we can make out with this expression is that the power of the variable or you can say the power of x is a non-negative integer fine so the power of x is a non-negative integer okay so any expression where a1 a0 or this a terms represents a real number and the variable it is not mandatory that all the time you will get x as a variable there could be y also z also anything we can put but only thing that we have to be very careful about that the power should be non-negative integers and also the power should be not in the fractional form, fractional form as well fine so this is how you can express or you can say that uh, the expression would be a polynomial now the next part of the introduction is that types of polynomial so let us see how many types of polynomials you have to study so types of polynomial so number one is linear polynomial fine linear polynomial so what is a linear polynomial so as we have said that the polynomial is represented by p of x or p of y depends on what variable we are using so suppose the example of linear polynomial is like this ax plus p so what we can observe here why we are saying this expression as linear polynomial as because a polynomial of degree one now what is the highest power of the variable we have used so what is the variable we have used in this particular expression it is x isn't it and what is the highest power of this uh, variable it is one isn't it so that is the reason a polynomial of degree one now this is a polynomial a polynomial with degree 1 fine with degree 1 it's called linear polynomial I hope you have understood now let us let me give, give you one example that is suppose 3x plus 5 this is a very good example of uh, um, linear 
polynomial another example you can take it as x minus 2 by 3 here also the highest power of variable is 1 okay so let's step on to the next type that is number 2 what is number 2 number 2 is quadratic polynomial quadratic polynomial okay now what is quadratic polynomial so suppose if i give you the general expression of this so if p of x is in this form you see ax square plus bx plus c now what is the highest degree of the variable here so highest degree of the polynomial is 2 and 2 is quadratic polynomial so we'll write a polynomial a polynomial of degree 2 of degree 2 is called quadratic polynomial okay now let me give you one example some example suppose uh, 3x square plus 5 minus 8 this is one of the example another one you can say if we use uh, y now as a variable so we can write y square minus 3y plus 3 is also a quadratic polynomial fine so <clears throat> and one thing and one thing in quadratic polynomial you have to be very very careful that a should not be equals to zero fine a should not be this part should not be equals to zero why if a is equals to zero then this whole term will become zero so only this term will be left over isn't it so if bx plus c is there then we won't be able to say this is a quadratic polynomial but we have to present this as a linear polynomial at then in that case fine in this case x could be b could be equals to zero c can be also zero but a cannot be zero because the highest power of the variable should be two okay so this part can be zero this part can be zero but this part cannot be zero that is a it should not be equals to zero okay now let's move on to the third part that is a cubical polynomial or you can say cubic polynomial fine so what is cubic polynomial students let me give you the expression for this p of x is equals to ax square ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d now in this case what is the polynomial degree a polynomial a polynomial of degree 3 this time you see what is the highest power of the variable it is 3 fine and here also you have to add a should not be equals to 0 or else it will become quadratic polynomial okay if this part becomes 0 so what and then then what will be the highest power of this expression 2 and when the highest power is 2 then it is no more cubic but it will be a quadratic polynomial okay now let's move on to the another important part of polynomial now th this is all about the types of polynomial now let's get on with the next topic that is value what is value of a polynomial <clears throat> the value of a polynomial is also very very important now suppose if i give you one expression p of x is equals to 2x square minus 3x plus 5 fine so what type of polynomial is this what is the highest degree 2 and when the highest degree is 2 what type of polynomial quadratic polynomial okay now if suppose we substitute the value of x with any number any number with any integer you can say suppose if in place of x we put 1 fine so in the expression wherever you see x is there x exists you just substitute the value of x with 1 so 2 into 1 square minus 3 into 1 plus 5 now solve it 1 square is 1 to 2, two ones are 2 3 ones are 3 plus 5 so 2 plus 5 is 7 7 minus 3 is 4 now this is called the value of the polynomial so what exactly the volume value of polynomial is all about so it is if p of x is a polynomial 
if p of x is a polynomial with variable x then this all numbers are represented by alpha or beta we will consider this all number suppose in place of alpha it could be any number it could be positive integer also it could be negative integer also so once we are substituting the value of the variable with any number that we consider as alpha and after implementing the value the val fine after implementing the value of one or you can say after substituting the value of x with one whatever the answer we are getting that particular answer is called the value of a polynomial fine i hope all of you have understood now let's move on to the next very important topic that is zero of a polynomial it is also very similar to the value of polynomial zero of a polynomial very very important topic now what is a zero of a polynomial again let me give you one example that is suppose if p of x is equals to x square minus 2x minus 3 okay now once we uh, have understood the value of a polynomial now suppose if we substitute the value of x with any number any such number after which when we substitute the value of x with that number and we get the value as zero then we'll consider the value of x whatever we have substituted that particular value is a zero of the polynomial now let me give you an example suppose this is a, a polynomial which i have given you that is p of x is equals to x square minus 2x minus 3 isn't it now what if i substitute the value of x with 3 now in place of x we'll substitute the value 3 now 3 square 2 into 3 minus 3 now what is 3 square 9 2 3 is a 6 minus 3 9 minus 6 is 3 and 3 minus 3 is 0 now you see the value that we are getting is 0 when when we are substituting the value of x with 3 isn't it so now we can say that 3 is a 0 of the polynomial px so there there could be many zeros there could be more than one zeros fine so uh, as because you see what is the highest degree of x what is the highest degree of x it is 2 so number of zeros would be 2 only so if 3 is one of the polynomial then uh, the another polynomial would be minus 1 now you must be thinking so how you know that 3 and minus 1 after putting minus uh, 3 will get 0 and minus 1 uh, also we'll get zero so there's some procedures which is called as middle term factorization which you have already studied in your previous class okay so when you see the highest degree is two the number of zeros would be what two only if you see the highest degree is one then the number of zeros of that particular expression will be how much one okay that means a for this particular expression there are only two values of x after putting once you put once you substitute those values in the in place of x you will get zero okay now let me see if we substitute when we substitute the value of x with minus one uh, uh, will we uh, will uh, the answer will be zero or not okay so let us check minus one square two into minus one let me put this two inside the bracket 3 now minus 1 square is what minus 1 into minus 1 minus 1 into minus 1 will be what 1 because minus minus will become positive so this is 1 and 2 into minus 1 will be will become what minus 2 and already minus sign is there outside the bracket so it will be plus 2 minus 3 so 1 plus 2 is what 3 and 3 minus 3 is 0 <clears throat> so two zeros so required zeros you can say so required zeros are 3 and minus 1 fine so these are the only two numbers okay for this particular expression uh, when you substitute the value of x with this 3 and minus 1 you will get 0 and there are no other numbers if you substitute the value of x suppose if you put 2 if you put 4 any other number apart from this 3 and minus 1 you will not get 0 
fine so these are the required zeros of this particular expression or you can say of this particular polynomial so this is all about zero of polynomial now <coughs> let's <coughs> step on to the last topic of this session that is what is the relation between the zeros okay what is the relation relation between what is the relation between the zeros and coefficient of a quadratic polynomial so we are studying only about quadratic polynomial which is a very important topic polynomial only about quadratic polynomial fine so as we know what is the general expression of quadratic polynomial it is ax square plus bx plus c fine so when we consider the zero so how many zeros is possible for this quadratic polynomial two so number of zeros is how much number of zeros is two and what are those two zeros we'll consider those two zeros as alpha and beta now what we are trying to say is that what is the relation between this alpha and beta with this a b and c a b c are the coefficients fine so i am giving you the uh, <coughs> relation straight away that is the first relation is first relation number one the sum of the zeros that is alpha plus beta these are the zeros so the sum of the zeros will be always equals to minus b by a this is the first relation students very very important relation you have to remember and what is number two the product of the zeros will be always equals to c by a so these are the two very important relation that you have to remember students fine so this is all about quadratic polynomial so what did i explain here i explained that what is the relation between the zeros which we have considered as alpha and beta and the coefficients of the quadratic polynomials which are the coefficients here a b and c so these are the two relations these are the relations okay now based on these relations many problem one very important sums uh, always uh, are very common questions which we will find in the question paper fine let me show you that example and that is how we'll end the session today now suppose if example now suppose if i give you one polynomial as p of x is equals to 2x square plus 5x minus 12 okay now the first thing that you have to find out the zeros of this polynomial so what did i say how to get the how to get the zeros by using middle term factorization so first number one first get the zeros first get the zeros fine so how to get the zeros what is the method it is middle term factorization how to get the zeros it is middle term factorization factorization okay this is how you will get alpha and beta okay so once you get the value of alpha and beta then we can show this relation is true for the expression okay so let's move so let me just write the expression that is 2x square plus 5x minus 12 so I hope and I believe that all of you should know the uh, process that is middle term factorization. So I'm doing it for all of you. So so product is 24 and uh, the middle term is 5. So which are the two numbers will satisfy this expression? That is 2x square plus 8x minus 3x minus 12. See 8 threes are. 24 and 8 minus 3x is 5x so we need to satisfy the expression now what we what is the next step that we do we take the common from this first two term and the last two term so from this two term what would be the common part 2x so if you take 2x as common what will be inside the bracket x plus 4 so what is the common from this two term that is 3 and again x plus 4 so x plus 4 
and 2x minus 3. So these are the two zeros. Fine. So when these are the two zeros, we'll compare this with this two term with 0 to get the value of x. So x plus 4 is equals to 0 and another term 2x minus 3 equals to 0. For this particular term, what will the value of x? x would be minus 4. So one of the zeros is minus 4 students. And for this, the first thing you need to do is you need to bring this minus 3 towards right hand side. You will get 3. Now finally you have to transpose this 2 towards right hand side. You will get x equals to 3 by 2. Okay, so this is all about middle term factorization. Now these are the two zeros that is we'll consider alpha as minus 4 and beta as 3 by 2. Now what are the coefficients in this expression? In place of a, see, if we compare the general term, it is ax square plus bx plus c. What is there in place of a? 2. So we'll write a is equals to 2. What is there in place of b? It is 5. Fine. And what is there in place of c? It is minus 12. So we'll write minus 12 here. Now, as we are aware of alpha, beta, a, b, and c, now the next part and the last part of this question is that we'll prove this two relation equal. Fine, that is LHS equals to RHS. Let us see the first relation that is alpha plus beta is equals to minus b by a or not. Now, what is alpha? This is LHS students. Okay, and this is RHS. Now what is alpha? Alpha is minus 4 and this is 3 by 2. So we'll add this two. So minus, minus 4 plus 3 by 2. We'll do the LCM. So 1 and 2 LCM is 2. This would be 8 plus 3. So this answer would be minus 5 by 2. Okay, I guess I'm right. Now let's see what is the answer of RHS. So minus sign is already there in the expression. Now what is B? Let us check. What is B? B is 5. B is 5. So in place of minus B by A. So in place of B we will write 5. And what is A? A is 2. A is 2. So as we see LHS equals to RHS. Okay. So the first relation is true. Now let's talk about the second relation. That is let us do with the different color that is alpha into beta is equals to c by a now again we have to satisfy lhs equals to rhs so lhs and rhs so alpha is minus 4 and beta is 3 by 2 fine so let us reduce this 2 1 the 2 2 to the 4 it is minus 6 now what about c by a what is c c is minus 12 and a is 2 so this is minus 12 by 2 again if we reduce it then we'll get minus 6 so see lhs answer is also minus 6 rhs is also minus 6 so therefore lhs is equals to rhs fine so this is how we have shown uh, and verified the relation between the zeros and the coefficients as well. So what, what type of question will come? So they will give you this expression and they will ask, verify the relation between its zeros and coefficients. So this is a process. This is how you have to do it. First, you have to do the middle term factorization to get the zeros. Once you get the zeros, then you can prove the two relation that I have given you. Uh, how to prove the two relation that is you have to prove LHS equals to RHS both the sides should have the equal values fine so that's it for today's session I hope all of you have enjoyed the session and understood whatever I have tried to explain so till we meet again take care God bless you all and be safe